Where are you? What's this game about? Think there's any Sasquatches down there? Quite a drop. You look for apples up there. Looking for peaches and apricots, I believe. <laughs> nice try. Well, I should have brought a ladder then, shouldn't I? I got my ladder. Oh my gosh, what in the world? What in the world are you doing? Don't think you want to take your chances down there. Whoa. The first step is a doozy. <laughs> you better keep hiking. Oh my gosh. Death trap? Who, who drives a stake into the ground like that? Something's in those trees. Yeah, 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 I heard it. Something is tracking us. Branch dropping. It looks like an apparition from up here. That's the dust. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Fall River in southeastern Kansas, a water source which flows over 30 miles south and tributaries the Verdigris and Arkansas rivers of Oklahoma. When the river was discovered and by whom is unknown. In the 1800s, several small towns were established alongside the river, including Eureka, New Albany, and Cherry Vale. Famous American writer Laura Ingalls Wilder and her family lived in this area in the 1860s and 70s. She is of course known for the book series Little House on the Prairie. And some of her memories incorporated in those books were based on this part of her life when she was around kindergarten age. In 1977, the foundation of her family's house was rediscovered in a field. And a facsimile of the original log cabin was rebuilt there along with a schoolhouse, a post office, and a gift shop museum specializing in little house collectibles, books, and DVDs. Prior to the 20th century, the Fall River was home to the Osage people, a tribe of Native Americans. 
for unknown years. They had a village of teepees here and would hunt deer, elk, and turkey along the river. The Osages were highly trained warriors, but were also known to be generous and friendly. When the first pioneers arrived in the 1860s, the Osages tried to be good neighbors when they could and even shared their drinking waters and fishing areas. But this gentle friendliness between the two cultures would be brought to the test by turbulent events which unfolded during the Civil War. In 1863, the Confederate Army was searching for a new supply line to the western frontier. And cleverly, so they thought, they found it by sneaking through Native American territory along the Fall River at a place called Drum Creek. But one fateful day, it all went wrong. Twenty Confederate soldiers were riding through the territory when, according to legend, they came upon a Native American princess. She asked the men who they were, to which they said they were a troop of U.S. cavalry passing through. Then she asked them, why are your clothes gray, not blue? The men quickly jumped down and tried to take her prisoner, but she ran away from them and escaped, leading them on a long foot chase through the forest. Eventually, she came to a place of tall cliffs by the river, and she climbed to the top. And when she looked down below, she saw it was a 40-foot drop straight into the water. We have you now, they said as the soldiers surrounded her. But the princess turned back around and jumped as far as she could into the rushing river below. The men turned around quickly to go after her. But suddenly, they saw standing there her father, Chief Big Hill, with a dozen braves behind him. The Confederates drew their guns and an instantaneous battle broke out. One of the Osage Braves broke away from the battle and dived off the cliff as fast as he could after the princess. Within moments, the gunfire ceased. All of the Confederate soldiers and one of the Braves lay dead. That afternoon, Chief Big Hill waited by the side of the water for any sign of hope. Until finally, the Osage Brave came walking up the river bank, but his hands were empty. The princess had disappeared into the Fall River and never came back. News of the incident at Drum Creek quickly spread through the Free States, and the Osage Warriors became known as heroes for saving the day. They cut off what could have been a vital pipeline for the southern states in their effort to win the war. After this skirmish, the Osage and the United States became formal allies and drew up a treaty, wherein the Osages agreed to move 100 miles south to a new territory in exchange for a large herd of fine cattle and farming supplies. But what no one could have known at the time is that the new land the Osages agreed to had oil wells beneath it. And later in the 20th century, it turned out to be the deal of a lifetime. But the tribulation was far from over. And in the next few years, shocking events would unfold that would bring everyone to the brink. Laura Ingalls Wilder was interviewed about this crisis at a book fair in 1937, and she recalled the events as best she could. It began around 1870, when people traveling through southeastern Kansas began to vanish. Pioneers in covered wagons would stop at Cherryvale for supplies, but somewhere between there and Independence, they would disappear and never be seen again. Laura Ingalls Wilder remembered her family helping with the search parties, and in one instance, she herself found a string of Native American beads on a path called the Osage Trail, where people had disappeared. Her father, Charles Ingalls, 
shook his head and said he couldn't believe it. He knew of Chief Big Hill's reputation as an honorable and peaceful man who lived by his word. But then shortly afterwards, the search party found some of the missing pioneers' belongings floating down the river along with a tomahawk. In March of 1873, a doctor from Independence, Kansas, named William Henry York, went looking for his neighbor, who had gone for a trip on the Osage Trail, and never came back. York decided he would meticulously retrace his neighbor's route, and found himself at a small inn next to the road at Cherryvale, Kansas. The Bender Hotel offered food and lodging to pioneers and other travelers. It was operated by Ma and Pa Bender, along with their son, Junior, and their daughter, Kate, who was a fortune teller and clairvoyant. She told Dr. York that they hadn't seen his missing friend, but if he'd like to have a seat at her crystal ball, Perhaps she could conjure a vision of where he could be. Dr. York was just about to set down when he saw something illuminated by the candlelight. The shadow of a man hiding behind the curtain. It was Junior, the adult son of the family. And he was holding an axe. Dr. York quickly told Kate that he had forgotten something outside and would be right back. He went straight out to his horse and rode away as fast as he could, and then returned with a group of men from Independence. But the benders had cleared out. The group of men went in the house to search around, and soon they discovered the chair Dr. York was to sit in had a swinging door on the floor beneath it attached to a pulley string. It was, as they call it, a trap door. And when the men opened it and lowered down a lantern, they saw piles of bones everywhere. At least 10 skeletons in a pit of horror. The Bloody Bender family, as history came to know them, had been luring travelers into their hotel and then making them disappear down a trap door of doom. It was all so they could steal the travelers' valuables. And of course, it was the Benders who had placed the tomahawk by the river to frame the innocent Osages. Laura Ingalls Wilder said that her father was part of the posse that went hunting for the Benders that day. And when he returned the next day, he told her mother Caroline that the Benders would never be a threat to anyone again. And in her adulthood, she drew her own conclusions as to what that meant. The official books of history will tell you that the Bender family of serial killers fled the area and never resurfaced again. But the people of Cherryvale, Kansas, tell their own story. You see, some of the town citizens are direct descendants of the vigilantes who chased after the Benders that day. And they tell it thusly. The posse tracked the wagon wheels of the Benders north to the Fall River, which was swollen full from spring rain and flooding. And when the Benders saw the riders approaching, they attempted to cross the rushing waters, but the covered wagon quickly capsized and was pulled to the darkness below. And so ended the Bloody Bender family. Around 40 years later, the town of Cherry Vale experienced a renewal of sorts, as it became a stopping point for the Santa Fe Railway. And a new hotel was built, called the Leather Rock, and it provided lodging for railroad men en route to the gas fields and oil refineries of southeast Kansas. A century later, the Santa Fe glory days are over, and a much smaller railroad operates the old Cherryvale line now. But, a hundred years later, the hotel is still in existence. The Cherryvale Bed and Breakfast, as it's now known, 
has something of a reputation all its own. People say it's haunted by strange sounds late at night. Visitors staying there have heard a ghost cat meowing and even a ghost dog running up and down the hallway. But there are no such animals on the premises. People staying in Cherry Vale have also heard late at night the sound of children playing and singing outside. The thing is, the hotel sits on an old depot street, and there are certainly no groups of children singing in the streets after midnight. Some have wondered why these ghosts would even be here. It may have something to do with Big Hill Lake just outside town, named for Chief Big Hill. In the late 20th century, engineers working around the lake discovered the ruins of a Native American civilization dating back centuries. Perhaps this history also connects to the many ghost stories all along the Fall River Valley. People who go camping and hiking here say they hear voices coming from the woods. It sounds like a group of women mourning and weeping. And now, this weekend, we have come here too, to look and listen for ourselves, and we won't be leaving until we can find answers surrounding the legend of Fall River. scary old building. Oh, what are you thinking? thinking? If you stare at those windows long enough, you just might see something. You think there may be a ghost up in one of those windows? Is that an old TV set in there? Wow. What is that? Is that a TV set or a microwave? <laughs> My Hi, goodness. Hi. Would you like audio to go with that? Sure. Okay, this is a 1941 Plymouth Industrial locomotive, 12 ton, and it used to run at the Blue Diamond Walnut Plant in Carson, California, and it pushed cars of, gondola cars of walnut shells around. And the reason we acquired it is they pushed a few too many cars a few too many times. Uh-oh. And it blew a piston through the side of the engine block. Yikes. It had house paint on it. Oh. We were going through the layers of paint. Wow. We found the red, white, and blue. And oh so goodness. we're putting it back in those colors. Now, it, it's on its second go-round because it's been painted in the red, white, and blue for about 12, 15 years, something like that. And so time is... Oh yeah. The paint. This is the side the sun <laughs> comes up on. And the other side's fine. Yeah. And I'm getting all the old paint off because it slowly peels off and it bubbles off a little bit at a time. It's where it holds. It holds well, and where it doesn't hold, it's yeah. This is very off. vintage. Very vintage looking. Yep. <laughs> and it's a uh, 1941, and used to be on the Pacific, and we're beginning to restore it. Incredible machines. Well, my name is Tom, and this is Juliana. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you, nice to meet you. you too. Shirley happened to go by the door and saw you says, oh, they're videoing the big hotel. Yes. <laughs> yes, looks like quite a bit of history here. Yep, it was built in 1912. 1912. Oh, it is 1912. I was right. <laughs> to serve the, uh, used to be a depot right here for the Frisco Railroad, which is ah. from Wichita to the Joplin. And this is used to be the Santa Fe line that went from Kansas City to Tulsa. It was abandoned, then it was a museum. Now it's a railroad depot for the South Kansas and Oklahoma Railroad again. Incredible. So it went full circle. Good Hello. Hi. I'm Shirley Ann. Hi, it's nice, nice to meet to you. Nice to meet you. Hi, Shirley. Juliana? Yes. Oh, nice to meet nice you. To Come you. on in. This is our lounge. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
I see you have quite a book collection here, too. Uh, all the way back to the 1870s. 78, I think is Wow. And we've read quite a few of them. Uh, and it's interesting to see how the English language has changed. There's words not really? used anymore, and we can't even find it in a dictionary. <laughs> so you have some eight tracks uh, We had 39 third graders come through here on Wednesday oh my God. in three groups. And, and they had three teachers, and, and, and so we, we divided them up. And they, what is that? <laughs> we didn't know what that it's was. an old tape machine. So I got to explain that, and quite a few things that aren't normal to our society today are in this. No, place. no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this ceilings are tin. Cool. They are original to the building. And the flooring is original to the building and these little tiles were put in one at a time. First time we've done a tour for uh, children and they, they were very polite and very interested. Jim did the outside of the building and then another fellow that did the history of the trains here. So they were kept busy in groups of three. Did Jim are you into trains at all? Detective's yes. Notebook, page one. An interesting note about the town of Cherryvale. There is a small museum here dedicated to the Bloody Bender family. It showcases actual items kept from the Bender's Inn. It's rumored that before the museum opened, said items were locked inside this building, including weapons like axes and hammers, and even piles of bones. It could connect to the haunting of this hotel. It could also be why some people tell of fleeing here during the night, not even making it to the morning. Maybe they found out about the mass murder after they got here. Hard to get comfy with a pillow after something like that. It was here at this moment something occurred to me. What if there really is a ghost here? I don't mean a ghost story. I mean, what if there is really something invisible from another dimension that lives in this house? The thing about train hobbyists is it's real to them. And they take it very serious. They want the trains to run on time. <laughs> and every detail matters. Such a large building with so many locked and boarded up doors. It almost has an Adams Family feeling to it. The hotel operators were so kind to us, but I couldn't help get the feeling that they were hiding something, or at least not telling us everything. It almost felt like they were blocking for something. There's an echelon to it. One thing I can tell you for sure, whatever is or isn't in this oh, wow. house, it knows we're here now. Sometimes it's a matter of getting the papers in order. This could turn out to be a very long weekend. It's over 50 years old. It fits so perfectly. It does. I love it? this rug. Yeah. And so down this hall, we have two suites and two rooms. Uh, did Jim give you any history on the building at all? Originally, there were a hundred. There were thirty-seven suites on the three floors. Wow. If there's anything you need, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us. Thank a you call. so much. Thank you so much. Enjoy your stay. Oh, we're enjoying it already. Dedicated to Santa Fe Indians and the Santa Fe Bear Room. <laughs> I think she likes it. Yes. <laughs> Juliana, that's great. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. There's a story behind that picture where it says turquoise room. Really? That's the super chief and it used to run through Pasadena 
and a lot of movie stars used to ride on that train. Oh, wow. A young man came in and he saw they had a portfolio on the coffee table in the living room area that we were in, and we were looking at it, and he said, the young man came in, oh, that's my father's portfolio. He restores trains. And Jim and, and he says, you've got to meet my father. And the man walks in and he says, hi, Jim, how are you? We <laughs> know each other. Really? <laughs> How about that? Do you have an Indian background? <laughs> yes, we both do. Oh, do you, what, what tribe? Wichita. Wow. Yes. Your roots go way back. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. So, yes, we love the decor of this room. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, what do we got here? Classic, the last of the Mohicans. We can get a few pages in. The war, wait, war for the plains. War for the plains. That is General Custer. General Custer, I knew I recognized him from somewhere. No. Look at this old American flag. I haven't seen this version before. Looks like a cavalry flag. Amazing decor. And I love this room. Detective's Notebook, page two. As much as we enjoy our new room, it's time to venture out into the forest. That's where campers have heard wailing voices coming from. These are the same woods Laura Ingalls Wilder said she saw Osages building large bonfires in. And at night, she remembered hearing the natives singing. She said that their voices turned into the sound of wolves. By the way, remind me not to take this exit during the night. If I wake up for the night, remind me not to go out that door. <laughs> Swing that door open. That first step is a doozy. That first step is a long way down onto a pile of bricks. <laughs> There's no feather pillows down at the bottom, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, as I can imagine how people are seeing ghosts in these windows. It's like blood dripping down from the window. Some stuff has gone down here. Oozing out from this window pane. Some stuff has gone down here.
Roll that beautiful bean footage. Come with me. I want to live. Come along. What is this? A little surprise I have in store for you. Oh my word. Oh wow. Oh my god. Well, here we are. Wow. What do you have to say for yourself? I say, the only thing better than the view is the company. How'd you like to have a speedboat out there? Wow. Is that what you're thinking of? Hey, I'll take a lawn chair right here. Wow, what a beautiful It's the Lion King. Oh, I thought it was a MasterCard commercial. No. I'm Five years have passed. Five summers with the length of five long winters. And again I hear these waters rolling from their mountain springs with a sweet inland murmur. Once again I behold these steps and lofty cliffs, which on a wild secluded scene impress thoughts of more deep seclusion and connect the landscape with the quiet of the sky. The day is come when I again repose here under this dark sycamore and view these plots of cottage ground, these orchard tufts, which at this season with their unripe fruits among the woods and copses lose themselves, nor with their green and simple hue disturb the wild green landscape. Once again I see these hedgerows, hardly hedgerows, little lines of sportive wood run wild, these pastoral farms green to the very door and wreaths of smoke sent up in silence from among the trees with some uncertain notice as it might seem of vagrant dwellers in the houseless woods or of some hermit's cave where by his fire the hermit sets alone though absent long these forms of beauty have not been to me as is a landscape to a blind man's eye but oft in lonely rooms and mid the din of towns and cities I have owed to them in hours of weariness, sensation sweet, felt in the blood and felt along in the heart, and passing even into my purer mind with tranquil restoration, feelings too of unremembered pleasure, such perhaps as may have had no trivial influence on that best portion of a good man's life, his little nameless unremembered acts of mercy and kindness, nor less I trust to them I may have owed another gift, of aspect more sublime, that blessed mood in which the burthen of mystery, in which the heavy and the weary weight of all this unintelligible world is lightened, that serene and blessed mood in which the affections gently lead us on, until the breath of this corporeal frame and even the motion of our human blood almost suspended, we are laid asleep in our body and become a living soul while with an eye made quiet by the power of harmony and the deep power of joy, we see into the life of things. If this but be a vain belief, yet oh how oft in darkness and amid the many shapes of joyless daylight, when the fretful stir unprofitable and the fever of the world have hung upon the beatings of my heart, how oft in spirit I have turned to thee, O Sylvan Y, thou wanderer through the woods, how often has my spirit turned to thee? And now, with gleams of half-extinguished thought, with many recognitions dim and faint, and somewhat of a sad perplexity, the picture of the mind revives again, while here I stand, not only with the sense of present pleasure, but with the pleasing thoughts that in this moment there is life and hope. And so I dare to wish, though changed no doubt from what I was, when first I came among these hills like a row, I bounded over the mountains, by the sides of the deep rivers and the lonely streams. Wherever nature led, more like a man flying from something that he dreads than one who sought the thing he loved. For nature then, the coarser pleasure of my boyish days, and their glad animal movements all gone by, to me was all in all I cannot paint what I then was. The sounding cataract haunted me like a passion, the tall rock, the mountain, and the deep and gloomy wood. 
Their colors and their forms were then to me an appetite, a feeling and a love that had no need of a remoter charm, by thought supplied or any interest unborrowed from the eye. That time is past, and all its aching joys are now no more, and all its dizzy raptures, not for this faint eye, nor mourn, nor murmur. Other gifts have followed, for such a loss I would believe abundant recompense. For I have learned to look on nature not as in the hour of thoughtless youth, but hearing oftentimes the still, sad music of humanity, not harsh or grating, though of ample power to chasten and subdue. And I have felt a presence that disturbs me with a joy of elevated thoughts, a sense sublime of something far more deeply interfused, whose dwelling is the light of setting suns, and the round ocean, and the living air, and the blue sky, and in the mind of man a motion and a spirit that impels all thinking things, all objects of all thought, and rolls through all things. Therefore I am still a lover of the meadow, and of the woods, and of the mountains, and all that we behold from this green earth, and of all the mighty world of eye and ear, both what they have created and what we perceive, well pleased to recognize in nature the language of the sense. Nor perchance if I were not thus taught should I the more suffer my genial spirits to decay. For thou art with me here, upon the banks of this fair river, thou my dearest friend. And in thy voice I catch the language of my former heart and read my former pleasures in the shooting lights of the wild eyes. Yet a little while may I behold in thee what I once was. And this prayer I make, knowing that nature never did betray a heart that loved her. Tis her privilege throughout all the years of our life to lead from joy to joy. For she can so inform the mind that is within us, so impress with quietness and beauty, and so feed with lofty thoughts that neither evil tongues, rash judgments, nor the sneers of selfish men nor greetings where no kindness is, nor all the dreary intercourse of daily life shall ever prevail against us, or disturb our cheerful faith that all we behold is full of blessings. Therefore, let the moon shine on thee in thy solitary walk, and let the misty mountain winds be free to blow against thee, and in after years, when these wild ecstasies shall be matured into sober pleasure, when thy mind shall be a mansion for all lovely forms, Thy memory will be as a dwelling place for all sweet sounds and harmonies. Then if solitude or fear, or pain or grief should be thy portion, with what healing thoughts of tender joy wilt thou remember me? And these my exhortations, nor perchance if I should be where I no more can hear thy voice, nor catch from thy wild eyes these gleams of past existence, Wilt thou then forget that on the banks of this delightful stream we stood together, and that I, so long a worshipper of nature, hither came, unwearied in that service, rather say with warmer love? Nor wilt thou then forget that after many wanderings, many years of absence, these steep woods and lofty cliffs, and this green pastoral landscape were to me more dear, both for themselves, for thy sake. Lots of little booby traps through here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's so nerve wracking looking down like that. We better continue this way. Ooh. Something's in those trees. Yeah, 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 I heard it. Something is tracking us. 
I'm coming, I'm coming. Something ran right along the edge of this cliff. It's still here somewhere. Oh, I heard oh. it. I did too. Just <gasps> oh, whoa. this is so cool. We're gonna do this. Oh my god! Crazy Tom. You're gonna have to take the camera. Do this. Okay. Just lower yourself down. This is hairy. Wow. <sighs> you buy me dinner after this, right? <laughs> hey, I was gonna say that to you. <laughs> this thing I used to be a king dragon sticking the keys back in his lair. close to me. Is that another cave back there? are not alone here. Detective's Notebook, page three. After a long walk through the woods, what we can report to you as fact is that we were not alone this evening. As an outdoorsman, I can assure you that someone was walking right along with us, always staying just out of distance. First in the ravine below and later on the cliffs above, almost like a game. Hiking today, it was not difficult to imagine some of the chilling tales we have heard of this forest. Gold and silver pawn shop. <laughs> wow, the, look at there's a mummy in there. There's cowboys and mummies in there. Wow, you're right. My goodness. Mummy sarcophagus. Jump out and get me! All right here we are at Turbos. <laughs> hey, this sounds like your kind of place. Hey, just checking out the menu here. What's looking good on this menu? Bud Light. Oh boy. And a big potato. <laughs> Yeah. Although the hamburger and french fries is always tempting. I think you had a hamburger today already, didn't you? No, I had two hamburgers and a chicken sandwich and two small french fries. <laughs> Just can't get over whatever was chasing us today. It's like something was walking on the edge of the cliff. We heard shoe prints. Well, not shoe prints, but we heard something walking on the leaves. It's 
sounded like something was also throwing things in our direction. We heard what sounded like, I, I, don't, I don't want to sound like a Bigfoot show, but we sounded <laughs> We heard the sounds of like branches. There was one big one. But it didn't sound so much like a tree branch, it sounded like a block of wood was coming down. I don't know what was out there. It could be something furry. Wow, I'm starting to wonder if it could have been some furry animal. Some very bold furry animal because it was really taking some chances out there. Man, how is everything? Very classy. Great style. You know what? You had a rough day, so you deserve that. You almost went flying off a cliff, so... More than once. Almost asked you if we could turn the buggy around. We're not turning the buggy around. <laughs> we're just spending the night there. Yeah, we're not turning the buggy around. We're staying. Not looking forward to spending. We have an investigation to do. Serious one by far. So you better get ready. This hotel is mega haunted. Wow, that good, huh? You know that story, yo, you're so This steak is knocking black Angus. What are the other ones? Look at the other steak there. Sirloin. Outback Steakhouse out of the water. Really? Real horseradish. Oh, next time I'm going to have to get the ribeye. Wow. And, per usual, I got the hamburger. I'm so predictable. <laughs> I, I just love hamburgers. Hey, what is this, my fourth hamburger today? Literally, I'm just, a, I'm just a guy that loves hamburgers. And the chicken sandwich, which is like a cousin of the hamburger. But that was your chicken sandwich you didn't eat. <laughs> Compliments to the chef. I should start letting you order. You know what you're doing. Well, the good thing is that I share. It's grandma. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was strange. Well, there's a demented person on these streets. There's another ghost back there. Trick or treat. Scrapbooks. Scrapbooks and paper crafts. What a fun store. How interesting. This is a ballroom. Detective's Notebook, page four. It is now well after 10 p.m. as we prepare for tonight's investigation. We are filled with a renewed sense of determination as we have read stories online of people who literally ran away from here in the darkness of night. Well, guess what? This time, it's not gonna happen. We're staying up all night and we're not going anywhere. So if there's any ghost watching, get used to having some company. This time it's your turn to buckle in. getting some unusual readings right here. I don't have an immediate explanation for it. It's almost as if there's an invisible doorway separate from the rest of the room. There is... Right here, you're saying? It's like a doorway with someone standing 
Just as an aside, we absolutely adored this room. I'm someone who grew up near two different lines of the Santa Fe, and we just felt so at home here. If you're someone that knows anything about train history, in the 20th century, the Santa Fe Railroad was the Orient Express of the Western States. This room was an absolute homage. It was a dream come true for us, and we felt so blessed here. getting some really strange spectrums here. Look at this. Oh. It's never done anything like this. It's almost like a doorway. Yeah. A black figure right there. Whoa. There is a figure. A person standing there, do you see? I do. What's this ghost stage supposed to be? Oh no. Oh wow. Oh wow. Wow. Just for a moment you can see. A I see the, figure I see with the a, head. Yes. And the arm. Arms. I see it. I see it. It's a humanoid. It's right here in front of the couch. A, almost a black mist that envelops oh, the center wow. of the camera. It's like some portal. Yes, there's a large differential there. Okay, when we walk out of the room, it changes. Detective's Notebook, page five. Well, I think it's safe to say this mission is getting pretty wild and out of control. I mean, what was that in the room? What sort of prism? It, it was like a prism opened up. I mean, what was that on the thermo gun? And this huge tall figure was just standing there, like it was staring us down. I couldn't help thinking of the Osage Brave who jumped in the Fall River after the princess. Could this be him, all these years later, still guarding something, still guarding his post like a sentry? It was almost like a doorway the tall figure was standing in, like a spectrum to another realm just opening up like two doors. You may have also noticed the temperature differential. It went from 16 degrees Celsius to 34 degrees Celsius. Not from room to room, in a matter of inches. 
huge temperature gauge there. I will tell you, something cold was in that room. It was person-shaped. It was large. We're talking over six feet tall. A big mist-shaped object. Maybe the ghost likes it here. Or maybe he likes the building owners. Maybe the Santa Fe room is his room. Maybe he loves it there. We sure do. Detective's Notebook. The night was mostly quiet as we stood guard until the break of day. Until sometime after midnight, a train came coasting into town. It startled us because we did not hear any whistles in the distance. It just appeared. And you know, I'm somebody that has been around a lot of trains in my life. I've heard sad sounding trains. I've heard lonely trains. That scared the daylights out of us. This was the first time I had ever heard a train. It sounded like it was lost. Well, what have you been finding? Don't say a talking bear. I found a talking bear. <laughs> Don't say that. I did. You found some fire pits? I found some fire pits. Um, I saw that cool stairway thing yes. up to the... Maybe you can climb up trail. there. Heard something go bonk over there. <laughs> What was that? Yeah, that it was a bird. Bird dropping an acorn. All right, we better investigate down here. I heard if you stare into the river's reflection long enough, you see a person on the other side. Really? I do believe there's a squatch in these woods. Very funny. What'd you see? Four jumping turtles. Four jumping oh, turtles. Like a diving team. Oh, so this is their diving board, huh? Yes. Ah. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, they were enjoying a sunny Sunday. Sunny Sunday. <laughs> what is this? We found a stairway. A very ancient stairway. Wow, there's like a mill right there. It's called Otto's Mill. Otto's Mill. I see a rope swing. We just put a rope swing up right there. Hey, great idea. Climb up the side. What are you doing up there? Maybe it was a branch, but I just felt something rub against me. I thought it was you for a second. Mm -hmm. Wow. <gasps> oh my goodness. Wow. All right, should we climb down there and investigate further? Yes, we can.
It may have been a branch, but I felt like something patted me on the back. Maybe it was the person saying she likes to get here. Make an incredible weapon. Oh. Make a good Viking weapon. I would love to go into battle with this. But I'll save it for later. <laughs> Oh my goodness, look at this tree. Uh, you can almost make a canoe out of that. People are actually using this as a fire pit. Oh, wow. People come down here and cook, uh, cook hot dogs. Tom! Since when do you start doing all your own stunts? As we conclude this weekend's mission, and present our final report. First of all, we'd like to thank our wonderful hosts at the Cherry Vale Inn who made us feel so welcome. And we'd like to thank all of our viewers for being here and being so wonderful. After conducting an all-night investigation of the haunted hotel, it is our opinion that the sound of children singing late at night is probably the sound of railroad tracks screeching and squeaking across the street. The train we heard rolled in silently after midnight with no whistle. The ambient and ethereal squeals could mix with people's dreams in this hour of lucid sleep and could conjure images of distant voices. We also believe that the ghost cat and dog are probably just a cat and dog. Neighborhood animals that get into the building at night and this cat and dog probably find an old basement door to go through and make themselves right at home. In fact, we believe animals are the major culprits in this area's famous hauntings. The Native Americans that Laura Ingalls Wilder heard singing and said it sounded like wolves, probably were wolves. When the natives would sing by the campfires at night, the local wolves would join in and start singing with them. And after the Osages moved away, the wolf pack probably carried on the tradition of singing at night. We also believe that the curious creature following us through the woods on Saturday evening could have been a wolf, or perhaps something more sleek and wily like a small fox. The area of Fall River is populated by red foxes, and this may be a huge clue in the case. Unlike other canines that growl and howl, foxes scream. They make a screaming or crying sound that could be mistaken for a voice. And almost certainly, the legend of women weeping and wailing in the forest is actually the sound of foxes communicating with each other. One peculiar moment I'll be sure to remember is when I was looking down at the waterfall at Fall River. And for a moment, it felt like someone was standing behind me. I suppose it was just a tree branch. But if a tree gives you a hug, is that anything less marvelous? <laughs> well, we don't know. As we prepare to leave for home, we'll be taking so many memories with us. There was a warmth in the air this autumn weekend. A feeling that was welcoming and inviting. As if we were walking through someone's home. Historians say that here are the ruins of some ancient village dating back to time immemorial. It seems that the Fall River of Southeast Kansas holds legends and stories we could only begin to imagine. Stories that will remain locked in secrecy and unknown to the ages. Thank you all again for coming with us this weekend you made it so special for us. And we hope you have a wonderful night.